Hi, my name is Oktai. Welcome to today's video about the chemical element magnesium. This is a picture of magnesium metal. Uh, the name magnesium, the origin is not uh, clear. Uh, it could be the Greek word magnesia litos, which means magnesia stone, or it could be from the Greek city of magnesia, or from the Turkish city of magnesia. Magnesium has the atomic number 12. There are three uh, isotopes and the isotope 24 is most common with 79 percent this is a picture of the periodic table and of the nucleosynthesis of all the chemical elements magnesium is a member of the beryllium group and its origin is from exploding massive stars magnesium is an essential element uh, for life This is a picture of the chemical elements uh, abundance in Earth's crust. Uh, magnesium is here, so very abundant. 2% uh, of uh, Earth's crust is magnesium. And in seawater, it's at a concentration of 1,300 parts per million. This is a picture of the nucleosynthesis of the lighter elements. Um, at the top left, um, that's the proton proton chain that uh, makes uh, the helium 4 isotope. Helium is the second most abundant element in the universe. At the top right, there's another process that also makes helium 4 a bit, a bit less uh, efficient. That's the CNO cycle. Again, four protons are merged to a helium 4 isotope. In the middle, that's the helium burning process, also called um, triple alpha process. Three uh, helium isotopes uh, merge to one carbon 12 isotope. And at the bottom, that's the alpha process, um, which explains um, why the elements with the even number of uh, protons are abundant, because uh, they're made of uh, helium, which is the second most abundant. In and magnesium is here. So um, it's a direct product of the second most abundant element, uh, helium. That's why 70% uh, of the Magnesium in seventy nine percent of the magnesium in nature is uh, magnesium twenty four. This is a nice picture of the uh, double star system Eta Carinae from Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, this system is located at a distance of seven thousand five hundred light years. It contains two stars. Uh, both are very massive. Uh, star A is hundred solar masses and star B is thirty to eighty solar masses. This nebula is called Homunculus Nebula. It has a, a blue area. Yeah. And this uh, blue area is a warm gas which contains uh, magnesium. And outer areas, uh, red filaments, uh, contain nitrogen. Uh, these are three of um, over 60 magnesium minerals. At the left, that's dolomite, um, calcium magnesium carbonate. In the middle, magnes magnesite is magnesium carbonate. And at the right, that's olivine, uh, which is a magnesium iron silicate. This is a picture of uh, magnesium metal from, from the pigeon process. This is one of the processes uh, to produce uh, magnesium metal. This is uh, a reduction of magnesium oxide with uh, silicon uh, that makes silicon dioxide and magnesium, elemental magnesium. Uh, magnesium has a boiling point of uh, 1091 degrees Celsius. Um, that's why it makes sense uh, to make a vacuum distillation. Because then you get a lower uh, boiling point and you need less energy. This is the second process uh, to make magnesium metal. That's a door process. It's electrolysis of molten magnesium chloride, which can be uh, produced from uh, brine. Brine is concentrated salt uh, solution. A magnesium solution is treated with lime, that's calcium oxide and water. That gives you a uh, calcium ion and a magnesium hydroxide precipitate. Then it's uh, treated with hydrochloric uh, acid. Then you get uh, magnesium chloride and uh, electrolysis gives you magnesium metal and uh, chlorine gas. Now these are two applications of uh, magnesium in uh, everyday life. Um, that's a flashlight and a pencil sharpener. And the biggest magnesium producer is China with about 85 to 88%. 
Uh, these are two more applications at the left. Um, you can use magnesium for tablet PCs because it's lightweight. And at the right, that's uh, part of a ship as a sacrifi sacrificial anode. These are the sacrificial anodes here and here. And the idea is uh, to protect uh, the body of the ship uh, with the sacrificial anode. The anode is oxidated. You have to replace it from time to time. But uh, that's an efficient way to protect the body of the ship. Now this is a picture of AJ62. Uh, it's a magnesium alloy with 6% aluminum, 2% strontium and 0.34% manganese. And one advantage of uh, magnesium is a low density of just 1.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Which that's uh, more, uh, more than one third less than uh, aluminum. Uh, however, aluminum has a better resistance against oxidation. That's uh, why you, it makes sense uh, to make this alloy. In the alloy, the advantages of both these metals are combined. And AJ62 can be used for engine parts um, good because it has a good uh, creep resistance at high temperatures and it is lightweight. 10% uh, of world's magnesium production is used in the steel industry. It is used for remove the oxygen and sulfur and reduce the brittleness of steel. And this is a picture of magnesium oxide, MgO. Um, it is um, a mineral called periclase. Uh, its application is for ref uh, refractory material for crucibles and it is added to Portland cement, uh, 2.2 to 5% magnesium oxide moves the strength of the cement. MGO is also used as food, as food additive E530 and it's an anti-caking agent. And this is how you make it, a magnesium 2 plus plus calcium hydroxide, um, then you get magnesium hydroxide and he, uh, if you heat it, uh, then you get magnesium oxide. Uh, this uh, very interesting uh, application of magnesium oxide in the analytical chemistry, that's the um, flame test. At the left you can see a um, typical red flame of uh, lithium compounds. Uh, there are two versions, that's one with the uh, borax bead test. And this is problematic because it, uh, borax is uh, toxic. That's why the phosphate test is uh, better. And at the right you can see examples of a phosphate bead. Uh, for example, with uh, iron 2 and iron C ions, you get a, a red brown bead uh, with an oxidizing flame, and with, with a reducing flame, you get a green bead. This is example. With manganese, you get a pink bead, a nickel orange, a copper greenish, and a silver bright yellow. In the middle picture, you can see different uh, zones of our flame. At the bottom, this dark blue zone is the reduction, reducing flame, the reduction zone. And at the top, that's the oxidation flame, oxidation zone. And you can both uh, use both these tests um, to make sure um, to check, uh, for example, for iron ions. That's how this works. This is a picture of magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. It's used as bath salt uh, for agriculture, cement additive, and uh, desiccant in organic synthesis. This is magnesium chloride, MgCl2. Uh, it can be directly extracted from brine. Uh, it is, can be used as a support for the Ziegler Natta catalyst, the titanium tetrachloride, uh, diacyl aluminum chloride. Uh, you can check my other video about aluminum for, uh, for the Ziegler Natta catalyst. Uh, this compound is also useful as a soil stabilizer um, against uh, erosion. And uh, Nigari salts are also magnesium chloride. They are used for coagulating the soy milk in the production of uh, tofu. Uh, this is magnesium carbonate, MgCO3. As a mineral, it's called magnesite. It is used for fireproofing, dusting powder, cosmetics, and uh, toothpaste. Um, MgCO3 is also a food additive E504, uh, which is, for example, used in uh, bubble gum. This is magnesium silicide, Mg2Si. Uh, can be made from uh, silicon dioxide um, with uh, excess of magnesium. The first step, you get silicon 
element second step uh, you get magnesium silicide and it has uh, multiple applications um, for example aluminium alloys um, it has semiconductor properties and it's a Seebeck generator it's a thermoelectric generator which can convert uh, a heat gradient to electricity This was uh, one big step in the evolution of life. Uh, we know life is at least uh, three point life on Earth is at least three point eight billion years old. Uh, nature invented photosynthesis uh, about three point two to three point five billion years ago. That's this reaction: uh, six carbon dioxide plus uh, six water to glucose is six H twelve O six as uh, oxygen byproduct. Um, the plants. Uh, can uh, convert excess glucose uh, to the macromolecule starch and store it. And the oxygen byproduct uh, was very important uh, because it led to the formation of the ozone layer. And uh, now life was able to conquer, uh, get out of the water and conquer land. Uh, at the left, you can see the structure of this uh, molecule, uh, chlorophyll A. It is a magnesium 2 uh, complex. At the right, um, this picture explains why uh, chlorophyll is green, because it absorbs uh, red and blue light, but not uh, green light. Green light is reflected, that's why it's green. And this is uh, Richard Wilstetter. Uh, he discovered that uh, chlorophyll is a magnesium complex and that it's related to hemoglobin, uh, which is an oxygen carrier molecule in the body. And for this discovery, um, Richard Wilstetter got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1915. At the right, uh, you can see an um, extraction process of um, chlorophyll with an organic solvent. Uh, these are magnesium sources, uh, almonds, uh, rolled oats, uh, spinach and dark chocolate. Um, magnesium has an essential function in the human body. Uh, 25 grams magnesium is in the human body. It is essential for nerve function, muscle function, immune system, steady heartbeat, blood, bone strength. It helps adjust the blood uh, glucose level, blood pressure, and it's essential for the synthesis of proteins. Um, this is the molecule ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It is the molecule in the organism that provides the energy for the, all the biochemical reactions. Uh, the energy is stored in this phosphate groups. And you can see it uh, makes a complex with magnesium 2 plus ion. Um, the magnesium ion is needed for the activation of this molecule. And this is a very interesting uh, variant um, of uh, a Grignard reaction. Uh, this is the Grignard reagent at the top left. Um, that's an organic halogen compound with magnesium between the carbon and the uh, halogen. Uh, the magnesium makes the carbon like an uh, anion. And you can see the Grignard reaction is a reaction um, that makes a new carbon-carbon bond. At the bottom there's a, a nice example that's called a Kumada coupling. It was uh, found in 1972. It starts with this uh, bromotheophene compound. At low temperatures with LDA, LDA is lithium di uh, diisopropyl uh, amide. HAF is a tetrahydrofuran, uh, that's a um, solvent. You get this organometallic compound, and with um, magnesium bromide and ether, uh, you got uh, this uh, Grignard reagent. And the trick is the Kumada coupling is a, a catalyst that's um, nickel DPPP. All right, that's dichloro 13 bis 13 bis diphenyl phosphenopropane nickel. That's the catalyst. And again, you have uh, to work at low temperatures. And this is the product. Uh, that's polycyophene. And uh, that's a very interesting product because it has a, a very big uh, conjugated pi electron system. Uh, conjugated means uh, alternating uh, double and single bonds. Uh, especially the oxidated uh, version of polycyophene is uh, very interested. That's called uh, doping, because it is conductive. And uh, this 
A group of compounds has a, a big potential for transistors and display technology for solar cells, the batteries, sensors and diodes. Uh, this is a nice picture of the mineral uh, lazulite, which is a magnesium iron aluminium phosphate hydroxide. Uh, that was today's video about uh, chemical element magnesium. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.